Hello, everybody, and welcome to Valkens Wild, the MXGP of the Netherlands, the second round of the FIM Motocross World Championship. And welcome to our live studio show here on MXGP TV with me, Paul Maitland, Lisa Leyland. Uh, we've got a packed show coming up. Our first guest is in place. But uh, before we meet our guests and uh, let you know who, in fact, you know what, Mikel Horan, <laughs> Clement de Salle and Hans Corvers. But uh, Lisa, before we go anywhere... Yeah. You know what? I don't know about you, but I'm over this bad weather. Although today, <laughs> <laughs> the sun came out. And, yeah, I um, know. I'm kind of feeling like almost Catalan, just like you. Almost, almost kind of like summer now, isn't it? There's, there's summer in the air, kind of, but not really. But it's almost there. Minus about 30 degrees, yes. Yeah, but this is good for Vulcan's Ward. <laughs> it is good for Vulcan's Ward. So fingers crossed it's going to last all weekend, although I don't think it will. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, anyway, look, let's meet our first guest, uh, Mikkel Harp, FNH Racing Kawasaki MX2 team. Uh, he got on the podium <clears throat> last week. And uh, uh, Mikkel, before we go anywhere, um, I know you like to say the odd thing. Oh, we have a little swear box <laughs> here. Okay, so just in case you do slip, you'll be putting some uh, euros in there. Okay, no problem. No problem. <laughs> I'll keep it here out of the way. Uh, but anyway, uh, Mikkel, congratulations on um, you know the, the podium last week. We'll talk about more about that in a moment, but um, a new team for you, FNH Racing. Uh, how's it been, first of all? It's been very relaxing, to be honest. From the first moment I came there, everybody was so nice to me. And uh, yeah, we've just been enjoying and doing a lot of training. Also with Mark, we've uh, yeah, just made a perfect preparation for this year. And uh, you can obviously see after the first round already, we are doing very good. Also my teammates. Of course, there was a little bit of nerves playing in, but uh, but I think everybody handled it very well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a good season. And how is the trainer, Mark? <laughs> 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 That's my Dutch accent. It's not very good, but is he as crazy as everyone? The crazy I man, the crazy man. I think if is you give he? him a little bit of alcohol, he'll be very right. crazy. But, but when we're at the track and when we're at the uh, practices as well, he's very, uh, very serious. Mm. Uh, but of course, off the track, he's a fun guy. Yeah. And you can also see, of course, the people who follow on Instagram. He's a, he's a little bit of a funny guy. Yeah, yeah a little crazy. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Matty. Uh, Matty Basin, um, race one. Perfect start to the season. Couldn't have gone any better, really, could it? No, I, had a, I had, didn't have the best start. But anyway, I, I made some good passes, as you see in the camera, uh, on the video. And uh, yeah, I, I, I did everything I could. But, but to be honest, I felt like I could have done even more uh, if I just had some, uh, some better starts. But anyway, it's the first race of the season, so I didn't want to push too hard and uh yeah i as you can see that i made some uh very i had a very good lap right there mm. i did some uh I think three some passes in one lap that one i think that's yeah, not too bad <laughs> and how were the emotions when you went back to the paddock because i guess you you've just finished in third you want to celebrate but yet you have another race still to go how how do you deal with that uh to be honest i went out i wanted to watch the mhdp race and i fell asleep on the chair because i think nerves and everything played so so i just got tired I, I just fell asleep yeah. on the chair, um, but yeah, I could feel it obviously. And also before second moto, I was I was very nervous. And I talked with a few guys, you know, telling them, ah, oh, you know, because I knew I would I was good. But the nerves, you, especially when it's the first podium, you have the chance to go on the podium. You can you can feel it a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. So and I try to be very honest about it because then it's easier to work with. Yeah. Because if you hide it, it's very uh, very difficult. Sure. And then it shows a little bit more on the track. And what about <coughs> excuse me, race two. Um, not another good start, but another third place finish and, and your first podium in MX2, third overall. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened because uh, normally my starts are very good, especially in the Kawasaki here. But uh, yeah, I just made two very bad starts. But uh, yeah, very nice passes and uh, made my way up to third. Uh, but the track was, yeah, it was insanely rotted because all of the rain we had on, on Saturday mm. and on, on Friday. But yeah. I honestly don't know. I just felt like I had a good flow and uh, just passed everybody. Mm. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. We were just talking outside, Lisa, before we came on air. And um, he was saying, you know, last week in Matali, I decided not to check the weather because they were saying it's bad, bad, bad. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't check and it was good. And he said, so for Holland, I'm going to do the same. Not check, check, check. And today it's perfect. So we've got a new ah, MXGP okay. weatherman Fantastic. in uh, Nikhil Harup. Thank so, you. So uh, the weather today, as you can see, is uh, scorchio <laughs> yeah. and blue skies. And if it starts raining tomorrow, you know that I checked already. Yes. Don't <laughs> check the weather. I'll, I'll really okay. try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just tell, tell us about um, last year, the end of last year, you dropped back to EMX 250. Mm. Do you think that was a good thing to perhaps rebuild your confidence? Yeah, that was the thing because I started out in MX2 because mm -hmm. I had a really good preseason and uh, I made too many mistakes and I put too much pressure on myself, which I also learned from. Uh, and then I went back to Denmark for a few months. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I went to my dad's company and worked a little bit, did some training, and uh, 
And then I came back and I decided to, to do the EMX because I felt like less pressure and uh, I had the speed for it a little bit more, you know, even if I made some mistakes, I could still be in top three. Mm. And uh, yeah, I did good. Of course, there was some mistakes as well, but uh, but that was the reason because I felt like there was less pressure and uh, I had to find my way how to deal with the pressure and uh, and then be ready because anyway, it didn't matter for m so much if I did MX2 or EMX, it was just to do some riding. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I did it. And yeah, I managed to get a podium in Lommel and uh, get a win in Sweden as well. So sure. it's yeah. not too bad. Good, good, good. Uh, and what about the conditions here? Obviously, we have had a lot of rain leading in. I mean, I live 15 minutes down the road and it's been nothing but rain like pretty much the last three, four weeks. <laughs> uh, some days been nice, but coming into this one. But today the sun is out. We should have had rain all day yesterday, but didn't. Um, but it looks like it's going to be a heavy, heavy GP, or certainly today. We don't know about tomorrow yet. Now we, now we did the warm up, and yeah, the track is very soft. But anyway, I ex actually expected it to be even worse yeah. because yeah, the rain has, it's been raining every day. I feel like yeah. there's not been any days which have been, uh, yeah, been like it is now. Uh, but I feel like if they do some good work tonight after the qualifying race, I think tomorrow will be not too bad. Yeah. Of course, if I go check uh, the weather, then maybe, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and what about your teammates? How are you getting on with them? Obviously, um, you know, Rowan, uh, Van der Moosdijk and, uh, and Mattis, Warame. Yeah, uh, we have all, two all gelling good? Yeah, we have two uh, very different uh, teammates, I would say, because one, one is a little bit more aggressive and, and one is quite, uh, yeah, relaxed. I don't know how to say it, but, but, but we use each other very well. Also in the practices, we've had some great training. Yeah, now Matisse got a little injury before the preseason races, but uh, before then we had some great racing, and every day there's somebody who's pushing really hard, and that makes you push a little bit more, you know. So the speed we had during this winter training was uh, unreal, and yeah, you can see it. I think mm -hmm. we were five, six, and seven in this warm-up, even though nobody really pushed. Yeah. <coughs> so it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, and obviously before we go, um, two weeks' time we go to Patagonia. You did your first MX2 Grand Prix there last year. Are you yep. looking forward to going back? Yeah, it's a beautiful place. I uh, it was surreal when I came there last time. Uh, so, last time I came, I was sick, so I couldn't I couldn't even get the good steak they had there. Yeah. Oh. I was just eating tomato soup. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> but when I get this time, I'll I'll definitely have a big steak. Oh, a big nice. steak. Yes. And um, <laughs> you're saying outside as well. It's like so <laughs> quiet. Um, just because of like um, you know normally we're MX2 and MXGP there that's it no support classes yeah. and uh, we joked that uh, when he was in the waiting zone all he could hear was like bird song <laughs> yeah so it, it felt so peaceful I was thinking oh this is this is how it is to be an MX2 you were just super chilled out aren't you at yeah the but it, that was like I felt like this is this is MX2 this is nice well, everything is chill it's a but then for I you. but then yeah but then last year I arrived at Matsley. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then it all went and a then little then bit. And then it all... Sh yeah, story. speak tongue. Don't yeah. speak too soon. No, no, no. Well, anyway, look, we are out of time. Yeah. Mikkel, thanks for joining us. FNH Racing uh, Kawasaki MX2 team. Uh, Commander Sal is getting ready to come in now and join us. But before we meet him, let's check out what happened uh, in Matsley a week ago. Here's MX2 Race 2 highlights. Very tight, but uh, Yago Kitz emerges with the lead as they head into turn two. So your winner from race one, exactly where he needs to be. Oh, and be out. Rami Hoffa, sorry, up the inside and takes the lead from Yago Kitz. So 7 11, Rami Hoffa, your new race leader. This battle here. Oh! Yago Kitz loses the front end, throws away a potential overall Grand Prix victory. So Hoffa leads, Bial second, Olsen third, Renault four, Jed Beaton still there in fifth place. And this is that battle here, look, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh, led out by Maxim Renault. Jed Beaton right down on the inside of him, number 14, he just gets stuck up in a rut and Harup will capitalise. So Harup finding his way back past and then Beaton drops it, that's going to knock him off the podium. And here it's now up on the inside of Maxim Renault, strengthening his case for an overall Grand Prix victory here at Matley Basin. Harup and Kiet just starting to lose pace now. Are we going to see Harup find his way past Olsen as they work their way towards the first corner? Yes, goes around the outside. The lead Dane in the race, number 11, Mikkel Harup for FNH Racing Kawasaki. 
Matinee Basin in February, they said. It will never work, they said. Well, guess what? It has, and it is. Biel goes past Hoffa and takes over the lead and enthralling in to this MX2 race two. But a back marker just getting in the way there. Obviously, Vial trying to avoid him, but that inside rut over there, very, very deep. Oh, he doesn't get the jump over on the finish line, and Rene Hoffer almost back alongside his teammate. Two more corns to go, and the number 28, Tom Vial, is going to cross the line victorious here in race number two at Matley Base, and he takes his first ever race win in MX2, and it's going to be good enough for second overall. Here is your overall Grand Prix winner, Yago Kiet. He doesn't know it yet, but he will do soon as he crosses the line in fourth. So Tom Vial wins the race, Hoffa second, Harrop third, Yago Kiet fourth, and uh, Thomas Olsen fifth, Jed Beaton sixth. First visit to the podium for Mikkel Harrop, FNH Kawasaki MX2 racing team. Tom Vial, same points as Harrop. Climbed the second step of the podium after that win ensured he would finish second overall. Yago Kiet climbs on the top step of the podium in MX2 for the first time, becomes the newest winner in the MX2 category here. And for the first time in his MX2 career, Yago Kiet will take the championship leader's red plate. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our live studio show here on MXGP TV. And look at that blue sky we saw just a moment ago hovering above this Falcons Wild Race circuit. It wasn't like that yesterday. But uh, hey, today is a good day. And uh, our second guest is in position, Clement de Salle, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team. And uh, Clement, great to see you back racing. Um, obviously, last year we, we lost you in Russia. Don't want to talk about that as in show you know talk about the crash but how was the uh recovery process and um was it a straightforward recovery for you were you happy with the way everything went uh yes i, I was happy how everything went but it was a long process because um you know in the beginning of the season i had my knee it was not so so bad but i deal with it during a few races and then pain and you know i had that in russia uh in the other side you know so, so it was complicated because i was like pressure on the on the other side that was not really full recover and then yeah wait for the long time that it uh, recover good but let's say at the end was uh, everything followed the plan and I, during the winter it was step by step and I followed my program so I'm happy to I was happy last week to be back uh, racing uh, racing on MXGP. On, yeah on MXGP you know yeah. and when did you start training again cycling for instance and when were you able to come back to the track start riding yeah i was able to <coughs> to go back uh, on the bicycle uh, really quick because actually it was a part of my uh, recovery and then uh, yeah that was like uh, around october you know mm -hmm. so then after this this was i listened my body really really good because it was really important you know to don't do to, to do benefit exercise and not going on the wrong way so you know i have to listen my body really really much and uh, at the end, I have to say, still now uh, things are in progress, so it's really good. And just before the season starts, I feel again one more step uh, that my legs progress, so it's good. So just the only thing now, I cannot really go run, but it's not okay. uh, not so bad. Really. I'm not a runner. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> um, okay, Matsley Basin last week. Um, would you say that you were 100%? Um, recovered like fitness and everything uh, before Matali and were you uh, happy with that or do you think there's still more to do there's still more to come yeah, f I was happy because um, first uh, first motto uh, I was feeling great and I was in fourth position and feeling really good in my body you know with all that uh, months without racing yeah. because it's important you know the adrenaline and everything from racing that you don't have and uh, this was uh, was really nice to feel and then I make some uh, some mistakes, so it was not so not so nice because it was uh, comfortably in fourth. And uh, but after that, I had to work back, and I finished top five. So, but I'm um, I'm happy how I feel, and also physically, I again uh, find some small thing to to be better. So let's see uh, let's see how the season goes, and uh, I think I'm positive to yeah. to to have better uh, better feeling and even do better. And actually, the track, you know, we talk about uh, we've had difficult weather coming in this weekend, but last weekend, on race day, the, the track conditions were perfect. I think it surprised everybody. Uh, how, what was it like to race there? I mean, it, was, it looked very dry and looked like there was good opportunity. 
Yeah, it's true, and I have to say they did a really good choice on the track uh, preparation. Yeah. You know, they didn't move anything, and that's good. You know, yeah. like when you expect a lot of water, it can rain and rain. And actually, at the end, it was a little bit muddy and hard on the need. They worked a little bit, and what was good. Yeah. So it was a really positive, uh, positive thing. Good. And on Sunday, a bit, I mean, a bit of wind and do dry the thing, and it was it was nice and some different line, and it was good. Good day. Okay, well, more from Clement in a moment, but here's how you can get involved with MXGP TV in 2020. Well, with the MXGP season up and running, don't forget the only place where you can watch the best riders, the best action, and the best races live is right here on MXGP TV. Also included in the package is the live studio show every Saturday, our 26-minute video magazine Behind the Gate, which is available every Tuesday, plus all kinds of other content for you to enjoy. Oh, and did we mention you also are able to enjoy the Monster Energy FIM Motocross of Nations as well. If you are already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support, but why not tell your friends about it as well? Get them subscribing and all enjoy the season. Well, it's just too good not to, isn't it? It's a good package going on there, actually. Yeah. Good little package. Okay. Well, look, um, come on, let's talk about uh, this weekend. Um, I know it's heavy out there, but this circuit... Obviously, over the years that you've been riding professional, you've had uh, three podiums, second overall last year. Um, is this a circuit that you enjoy coming to generally, or would you rather be on hard pack this weekend no, I, <laughs> in the south of France somewhere? I would be honest, I don't enjoy it. No. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. I mean, you know, it's a track that I had some up and down, so yeah. you know, it's, I'm not totally negative about it, and I, I also like sand. It's not... Not uh, that I don't like them, but I, I really am a guy who like to enjoy yeah. riding also on a racing day. So how um, do you yeah. explain how do you explain this uh, performance last year then, second overall? It was that just one of those days? Everything was perfect for you riding here, like on two previous occasions. You know where the con I mean you were charging last year. Yeah, and, and uh, you know I will start the same way uh, this year because yeah. you know. Uh, like I will take an example, Ascent 2016, I also uh, start the GP uh, not so happy about the place and everything and uh, and finally I win the GP <laughs> so you know I know what I can do, no? Yeah. It's just yeah. like, uh, um, I know I know that I can be a good sand rider of course and uh, I believe in me and then some things that people say or think I, I don't care. Mm. So you know I just have to have a right feeling and uh, you know last year I was 18 in the time practice. And then I finished uh, second of the GP, so you know I, I, I believe in me. Yeah. I know where I can be better than others during a GP, and that's important for me. And I will do my best. Yeah, it just shows there are no points for time practice. No, of course. <laughs> 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 well, look, Clement, we are out of time. Thank you for joining us, and uh, all the best you. this weekend and Thank for you. the rest of the season. Uh, Clement de Sal. Right, Hans Corvers is in the building, getting ready to. Well, the building, you know, the studio <laughs> area, uh, getting ready to talk to us. Uh, but before we meet him, let's check the highlights from MXGP Race Two, Masley Basin, MXGP of Great Britain, one week ago. Jacoby tries to go around the outside and it, oh, three riders, Geiser, Cairoli and Jacoby. Jeremy Siwa, oh, nicely done, but that's that left femur of uh, Prado. Just yeah. quick to pull that leg out of the way as the Swiss rider came through. Here's Gauthier Paulin, a quiet ride in fourth place for Monster Energy Yamaha, and uh, a good, solid start to the season for him. He's going to leave here. Uh, yeah, six in the championship. And a uh, good drive there, and uh, down the inside of Cairoli, who just looks across helplessly, allows him to go through, picks it up on the front wheel as well as he goes past just to rub salt into the wound of that knee and that shoulder, if you like. And Hurling's now up in the second position. 
But see, we're up the inside of Jacoby. Jacoby will try to go around the outside, though, loses out to the Swiss eventually. That is for uh, sixth place. Well, Paul, I just checked in with Paul's Jonas team. He actually crashed on his on his own, but the problem was his shoulder, his arm. He's got a few problems with that, so he's going to go get checked out and retire from the race, unfortunately. Oh, oh. they bang for us. Looking to lunge down the inside of Evans. Big deep rut there to the left, but the momentum was in the second rut there for the number 43 for HRC. But uh, Tim Geiser getting ready though to take the final lap. The one lap board goes out for the team HRC rider. He has been absolutely majestic in this second race, right from the very first lap. Didn't hang around getting to the front. And uh, as a result, he's more than 20 seconds clear of his closest rival, the two KTMs of Hurlings and Kai Rowley. And uh, it's been a dominant display from the Slovenian in the second race. It's not going to be good enough to take the overall, but Geiser will leave here on the podium, second overall. And uh, just like he did last year in Argentina when he took two second place finishes for second overall, Jeffrey Hurling, the Red Bull KTM, a winner in race one, second in race two. He will take the championship leader's red plate to Holland, his home Grand Prix in a week's time at Falconswad. <laughs> Tony Cairoli, third overall with a fourth and a third. Good to see the Italian legend on the third step of the podium. But Tim Geiser stands on the second step of the podium for Team HRC, but the Red Bull KTM of Jeffrey Hurlings leaves here victorious, 47 points, a win and a second, his 87th Grand Prix victory. The championship leader's red plate to Jeffrey Hurlings. Welcome back to our live studio show on MXGP TV from uh, Valkenswaard here, the MXGP of the Netherlands. Uh, round two of the FIM Motocross World Championship with me, Paul Mayland, Lisa Leyland, and our third and final guest, uh, Mr. Hans Corvus. And uh, the biggest smile in the paddock award <laughs> goes to this guy right here. I mean, wow. Hans Corvus, what a weekend uh, and what a great way to start the 2020 season. Yeah, we cannot start better than, uh, than that. So it was really nice. Um, uh, we did eight years in World Championship MX2, so ninth year, and then um, finally you fight for that, for, for to get the, the factory status. It, uh, it was not so easy, so it was nice to um, to get. For me, is a, a kind of reward that we got for the the factory status. So then you come in the new season as factory team, first GP, bam. Mm. Yeah, this that's. That's something special. Well, let's talk about this second race first of all. You made a good start, then lost the lead, then fell. Yeah. Um, how is the shoulder? Nothing serious? Um, the shoulder is okay now, but uh, he didn't train on the bike uh, this week. So um, he was uh, a little bit sour. So Tuesday, Wednesday, the planning was that he should ride a little bit on Thursday, but he decided Thursday morning not to do. Mm. But it's okay now. It's, uh, it's good. After he fell, I guess it would have been easy for him to stay in around seventh or eighth, but he showed that he really, really wanted it. Did that perhaps impress you the most? Yeah, because he liked the, he liked the track, but it was a difficult condition, but it's for every, everybody. Yeah. And um, yeah, first heat, he, uh, he, he took a quite good start and um, he got a little bit uh, help mm. from, uh, from Tom, but he, he was already good. But second, second heat, you you feel between the heats also that he that he won he want to win that he was he feel good to win and then he took a whole shot and yeah he was surprised that Hofer Hofer um, uh, overtook the, the first lap and then afterwards I say Iago then please uh, Hofer was eight first heat Fial was six you're one and, and on that moment too take a little bit time. Yeah. But he uh, he won to win her. He won he really won to <laughs> Well he didn't realise that he won straight away, did he? But you did. Just tell us how big was that win for you as a fan of the sport, but also as a new factory team owner. Now when you when you ask me this, I get goosebumps again. <laughs> because it's an amazing feeling, eh? yeah. Also uh, there was um yeah from everywhere more and more um how you say no pressure but attention mm. and mm. yeah we dream of, we dreamed about it and we hope but yeah you have to realize and he did so it's it's yeah. it's really nice i have to say a small remark for this week because he didn't train uh, iago 
um, but also his uh, grandmom last Thursday passed away I heard. two days ago. So I hope he will he will manage this. Uh. Well, this is the thing with Yago, isn't it? Normally we, you know, everything with Yago when the helmet is uh, off. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very quiet, shy. You don't really know what's happening. But as soon as he puts the helmet on, he changes. Mm -hmm. The game face comes on, yes. and it's almost like he can just put everything aside. And yeah. I guess you're hoping, whilst you can be compassionate, yeah. you're almost hoping that, you know, this Yago arrives, uh, you know, behind the gate. It's third season now that we that I work with him, and and still, I cannot, I cannot go in him because I cannot feel what he feel emotional. Yeah. It's yeah he 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 don't he don't show, but when you have the helmet on, yeah, he's on the Gaza. Yeah yeah yeah. He's, he wants to win. Well, let's talk about race one. We just mentioned it a moment ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so obviously before winning the GP, he lined up. He said he had some help from Tom, but uh, he was already riding very very good. But mm -hmm. again, you know, to win the first race of the season, you guys, everybody in the team, Yago must have all been yes, you mm -hmm. know, perfect, per perfect start. Yeah, we can we cannot do perfect, m more perfect, but. But was he a little nervous in the beginning? Maybe? Mm, Not really? No, no. Hey, he didn't show us. He didn't show and, and uh, he, he, he stayed calm. Also, he came in pit lane and yeah, everything's fine. Uh, we'll manage. Uh, it, it will be okay. So he's so, yeah, he's a cool, a, a cool frog. He's mm. a cool frog. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, obviously, winning the race, getting the Grand Prix victory, um, how did you all sort of celebrate after the... After the GP, was it just a quiet? Was it a quiet moment, or did you say, "Yeah, let's enjoy this now, and then let's pack everything and, and go next week"? To Hon Holland? Honestly, Paul, we didn't celebrate. Yeah, we um, we came after the race, the crew all together, and we say, "Guys, let's stay focused." Uh, the weather was not in huh, so nice conditions, so we have to go home because one week later, only seven days later, we are here. Huh? Yeah, so. Until now, we didn't celebrate, but mm. if we can manage, if he can manage that we leave tomorrow evening with the red plate, mm. before we go Argentina, I think that, that we have to <laughs> celebrate a yeah, little yeah. bit. Well, he's obviously the, the first Belgian uh, in MX2 to win since uh, Charles Roulant's won in Latvia 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, the first Belgian to win a first GP of the season since Clermont, Qatar 2013. Cool. Uh, and the last time we saw a Belgian with the red plate was just after Trentino of that same year uh, with, uh, with Clermont. So uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good for Belgium. Uh, but great for the organizers here as well because you have yeah. Jeffrey in MXGP and you've mm -hmm. got uh, Yago, mm -hmm. both local. Both yeah. with red plates. Yeah, it nice. should be good for the crowd this weekend. Perfect. And also Liam. Eh? Liam is uh, yeah. doing the yeah, MX250. Yeah. He, uh, he also surprised uh, me and I think also other people last week in the um, in, in UK. So in Italy. Uh, and he do now the 250. Mm. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice from the area around Falkenswart. Sure. Uh, and just before we go, uh, just a quick word on uh, Ben Watson. Um, I know he was disappointed not to finish higher up in the home Grand Prix. Uh, good ride in the first one. What happened in the second one was uh, just—I know he had a, a good start. Yeah, he was—he uh, turned six, uh, second heat. Uh, that first heat he finished seven was nice. So yeah. the goal was the goal for Ben because he came from small injury uh, for two times top ten. So he, he did first uh, uh, heat seven, and then he, he starts six, and we have a really small uh, uh, brake problem. So mm -hmm. he had no brake. Uh, after the first lap, so we have to manage the whole heat without the rear brake, mm. and it was not so easy. So yeah, he mm. couldn't take points, but he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. Like I say mentally he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Still 19 races, 38 yeah. motos to go. It's uh, still a long way. Yeah, I, I expect a good weekend for Ben. Yeah. All right. Well, look, Hans Corvus, thanks for joining us here today. Of course, uh, team owner Monster Energy Yamaha MX2 factory team. Uh, well, we are out of time here. Of course, uh, coming up next on MXGP TV 140, we are live for WMX Race 1, and from then we've got three more races. European Championship action for the first time this weekend. They're up with Race 1, MX2 qualifying, MXGP qualifying races as well. Um, and yes, we've had a little bit of interchangeable weather. Conditions are going to be a little bit heavy, but it's the same for everybody. Uh, but I think the racing might be very open as a result, and when they clean the track up tonight, I think it'll be almost perfect for tomorrow. So stick around, hang around, and uh, tune in to watch every race live on MXGP TV. Well, that's that's it for a studio show here. Lisa and I will be back in Patagonia in two weeks' time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all then. 
enjoy the racing this weekend. And thanks to our guests, Hans Corvus, uh, Clement de Salle, and uh, Mikkel Horat. What a star he is. See you next time. <laughs> Bye for now.